Yep, that was me. I can explain. What's up guys? How is everybody doing on this fine Friday night? Wow, that's so sad. I'm currently alone in the apartment. Um, nobody's in town. Everybody's out enjoying their lives and I'm here doing nothing. Well, I tried to have a productive day. I got fully ready for my 3 p.m. class here at my school and like I took a shower, I did my hair, I moisturized and I was wearing a cute outfit. I drove all the way to my class and then I went inside and the classroom was empty, so. Woo! I also cleaned my room. Look at that. Really cute. This video is highly requested. What my parents did for a living because in a video I did a while back, I would say like four months ago, three, I don't know. I did a video where I showed my childhood pictures and in some of them, there were some celebrities and everyone was confused why I met those celebrities. I said in the video, it has to do something with my parents' job. So after I said that, y'all didn't forget. It took me a while because this video is a lot. Oh, it's the truth. It's what I've been hiding from you guys. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Just kidding, it's really not that deep, but I thought I would finally tell it because I feel like on this channel, we're all close here. I feel like making this video is very important because it'll let you in on a part of my life that I haven't shared with. And once I share it, we'll all be a little bit closer. So you guys know that I'm not a robot who turns on a camera every week and um hides things. So to set the story. So back in the day, I'm gonna say between the years of like 2006 and 2000, I wanna say either 15 or 16, my parents were the two hosts of one of the most famous radio shows in Seattle, which is in Washington at the time that these were all taking place. This video is also not meant to brag at all, hence the famous in the title because to many of you, you don't know who my parents are, but where I lived growing up, they were well known, if that makes sense. So yeah, this is not meant for bragging purposes. If it was, I would have made it a lot sooner. So back to the video. So their names were Jackie and Bender. So that's what the show was. There was a few more people on the show with them, but they were the two main people. Back in the years of like 2008, 2010, they were the hosts of their own radio show. So in the morning, people, everybody all over Washington would always turn on the radio on their way to work or school or whatever. They were the station that most people would go to. So growing up, I knew what my parents did, but I also was extremely clueless. I was a little second grader on the playground and I would have, let's say like sixth graders come up to me on the playground and be like, your parents are famous, aren't they? We listened to them on the car ride on the way to school today. So me in elementary school, being as little as I was, would look at them and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what about, what about it? it? Because I had no clue what it was. I didn't really have a concept of like how much impact they had on people in Washington or let's just say like the Seattle area. So that was weird. I also have a vivid memory of being in one of my friend's cars, like in the back seat and looking out and seeing a bus and I shit you not there was a billboard on the side of the bus and it was their faces on the side of the bus and my little kid brain thought it was normal that everyone's parents had billboards like I was so not with it so basically that's what they did being in the position that they were I got a lot of opportunities this video is not me being like, oh guys, guess what I did when I was little, like, hmm, ha, ha, like you didn't get to. No, it's just me wanting to share with you a big part of my life that I feel that you guys deserve to know. The rest of this video is gonna consist of like mini stories that all involve a celebrity. Um, But my run-ins with these celebrities was when I was between the ages of like eight and like 12, so I was very young. So the clip I showed you in the very first part of the video was obviously a clip of Little me, I'm pretty sure I was like seven. My outfit was horrible, um, but I was on stage and my parents thought it would be like a cute idea to like have me introduce Jesse McCartney. So some of you may be too young to know who that is. I'm gonna play you one of his songs. Jesse McCartney sang Beautiful Soul. It goes like this. I don't want no pity face. I don't want you to say what to hope. I don't want my love to go to waste. 
You don't know who that is. Um, you're probably too young to be watching this video, but don't worry, I'll be definitely getting into stories about celebrities you all know. Yeah, I don't really remember much from that. I think I actually blacked out on that stage because it's still very apparent today that I have severe stage fright. I never do well in presentations. I never do well um, speaking, which is weird because I have a YouTube channel where I talk to a camera by myself. Okay, so for the next story, I'm just gonna jump right in with someone that I know you all are very much aware of, and her name is Miley Cyrus. I don't know how old I was, but when Miley Cyrus turned 16, she had a birthday party in Disneyland. Like she had her sweet 16 in Disneyland, and for press, she had a purple carpet. So instead of a red carpet, she had a purple one. And my dad brought me with to go and do press with him. And I was the one who got to interview these famous Disney kids on the carpet. Let me just pull up. I have a few pictures of people who I interviewed. So I already showed these pictures in my other video, but now you guys have context of it. Here's me um, interviewing Zach and Cody on the purple carpet. Miley Cyrus is sweet 16. You really can't make this stuff up. Um, next one is Emily Osment. Right here is Miss Demi Lovato. But trust me, there's another story about her coming soon. So you might want to keep watching. I want, I want you and you your, your beautiful, beautiful soul. soul. And then I met Miley Cyrus at a separate time. I don't know when I met her. So while I was in Disneyland, me and my dad, because he was there for work, one of the ways that they, um, in a way, paid for him to be there, they gave him not only Disneyland passes, but they gave him a pass to go to Disneyland before the park opened. Will I get sued for talking about this? I don't care. It was like eight years ago, but I remembered going into the park before it opened and my dad was like setting up his equipment for something he was doing that day. And I shit you not. Oh my God. I don't think anyone's ever talked about this on the internet before. And I'm the first one that's going to talk about this. And before the park opened, the entire, every single flower bed in the main part by the castle was replaced every morning before the park opened. So all the flowers looked fresh and new. So that's why you don't see any dead flowers in Disneyland. I mean, maybe they changed their policy, but I remembered seeing with my two eyeballs that they were ripping out old flowers and putting new ones in. Oh, I'm gonna get sued for this. No, Disney, if you're watching this, oh my God, my back. That's gross. Ooh. Oh my God, okay. So staying with the theme of me being like younger, when I was about Let's, mm, I'm gonna say I was literally like six. I was super young and I remember this day my babysitter was the one who brought me to their radio station and this was the day that they were interviewing Lady Mother Gaga. I remembered being six year old me walking with my big head into the station down a hallway and the studio door opening and Lady Gaga walked out with two giant security guards on both sides of her like security guards and I remembered her wearing like these giant spikes on her shoulders and her hair was in like the blonde bob like poker face vibe so I'm looking up at her like the f my parents had to be like, oh, that's the girl who sings Poker Face. And I'm like, oh, okay. So was that. Didn't get a picture with her. Wish I did though. Could you imagine? Okay, next story. So this story involves my sister and not really me, but my sister and parents told me all about it. This next story involves Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. My parents met him twice. They first met him when he was a youngin, before he was famous, and then my parents met him again, and the second time they interviewed him, they let Bailey, my younger sister, interview him. Six or seven, so she was a cute little blonde girl, so they were like, oh, like, this is a fun little, like, interview that we'll have, like, Bailey interview Justin Bieber. And Bailey's right about to interview him. Justin Bieber asks my little sister, oh, hey, cutie, do you want to sit on my lap for this interview? And my sister responds, Bonds back with, no, I'm good, but thanks. Are you kidding? Okay, so there's not really many stories behind this, but one of the names I have written down is Selena Gomez. But here's one picture, and then here's another picture. So we'll just 
move on from that one. There's no crazy stories. Don't worry, Selena Gomez isn't crazy. I have a good one coming, just trust me. So there was this big concert that my parents always held. Every year it was called Jingle Bell Bash. If you're from the Washington area and you're above the age of 20, you know what this concert is, hopefully. So every year they hosted this concert and it always had pretty big celebrities like headlining the concert and it was during Christmas time. Most likely every year I was with them at the concert but I was backstage. I have a picture of me on stage. I'll show that right now. Um, can we talk about my jeans? Disgusting. So one time I was backstage at a concert and I, the main person who was headlining it was Demi Lovato. We'll get into that in a second. So while I was backstage, I was with my dad and he was talking with one of one of his coworkers. They were just chit-chatting. And this girl came up and was talking to all of us. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, this bitch looks really familiar. Um, anyways, so I'm looking at this girl and I'm like, I know you from somewhere. And then I realized that it was Becky G. If you don't know who Becky G is, click off. We don't need you. Just kidding. But Becky G was the girl who sang Sing in the shower. Hold on, bitch. Bring me up inside a cup of That's what I'm talking about. So I'm standing here with my dad and his, I think it was one of his co-producers or something. And Becky G comes up and I realize it's her and I'm like, oh, wow. That's Becky G. She dated Austin Mahone, which I also met, but we don't have to get into that. Anyways, so I'm gonna move on to the real tea. So the headliner was Demi Lovato. I'm gonna start this story off with, my parents met Demi Lovato quite a few times. And let's just say Demi is not that nice. Sorry, Lo Lovato's Levotics? If there are any Levotics watching this, please don't come for my neck. I'm saying from my parents' personal experience, she wasn't very nice. And she was headlining Jingle Bell Bash this year. And she, the Jingle Bell Bash that I saw Demi at was more recent. It was around like 2015-ish, I think, because that's when Snapchat memories became a thing. But I never saved any videos from the concert, so I don't really have any proof. So like, you guys can clock me in the comments all you want, but like, it happened. So before the show started, she was backstage. Here's a picture. That picture was taken after an interview. But while she's walking around backstage, if one of your supporters comes up to you, you should probably just take the f***ing picture. I remember someone backstage went up to Demi Lovato, like feet from me, like went up to Demi Lovato while she was walking from like, I, I don't know, the green room to like the interview or the interview back to the green room. And so the person's like, Demi, can I get a picture? And Demi just straight up looks at them and goes, no. And then her manager is like, she's not doing any pictures. Keep in mind, there was basically no fans backstage. There was maybe like a few teenagers that had connections with like adults that were there that just calmly went up to her and asked for a picture, but no. So just take that for what it is. So I never got a picture with Miss Lovato. So she goes on stage, she performs. If I somehow can finesse a picture from this concert, I will. I couldn't find any. Also, I look like Jimmy Neutron right now. So I remember during this concert, I was sitting on a, um, it was just like a random crate on the side of the stage where like you can see the audience and the person but like the audience can't see you because you're like behind the spotlight and I'm sitting there like feet from her like watching her perform and she performs it was really good I forgot which song she sang during that maybe it was cool for the summer and after she's done performing my sister was on the other side of the stage with the other people watching the performance and after the performance was done Demi gets off stage and is instantly put into Ugg boots and like wrapped in a robe and like the whole shebang. On stage singing, gets off stage, put into Ugg boots and is basically carried away out of the stadium. Like you would think that most artists would like get off the stage and just say like a quick like, all right, goodbye everyone and then dip. I'm just gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and she was probably really tired. So most of you know about the show called the Bachelor. So normally on The Bachelor, they will have these group dates where they all go and do a certain activity or something in the location that they're in at the time. And there was this one season of The Bachelor. I can't remember what year it was. The two main contestants that ended up together was Molly and Jason. They were the two on the season that ended up together, but at the time there was three girls and there was Jason. For their group date activity, they all went to my mom and dad's radio station and they did a show with them there. I don't know, but it's serious in there. Clearly 
Usually we know you're kissing them all. It happens. And it's not, and, and I can't, I'm not judging you. You have to. You have to, though. You know yeah. what I mean? You That's go on dates. Yeah. yeah, you go on dates every night. All the girls know it's happening. But since they're in the other room, who's the best kisser? So yeah, um, anyways, okay, moving on to the next story. So I'm pretty sure most of you know when Hunger Games first came out with a movie, like the first Hunger Games movie, there was a fat press tour. If you don't remember, it was basically just a bunch of tweens and teenagers that were all there wearing their Mockingjay pins and like their all their merch and all that kind of stuff. And the whole cast of Hunger Games came and like did an interview on stage and it was like always in like an outdoor area or whatever. Maybe some of this is a fever dream. I don't know, but whatever. After this press tour happened, oh yeah, by the way, I never got to meet any of the cast members. Still pissed about it. Afterwards, while I was leaving, by the looks of my haircut, I was definitely like 11 or 10. These girls came up and asked me to sign, I think it was either their hands or it was like Girl Scout cookies that they had with them already. I didn't know what was up, let me tell you. So that's, I think about it. Um, I have a few more stories, but I don't think it's with people that you guys would really care about. So I think I'm just gonna cut this video short. And um, if you've made it to the end, I congratulate you. So now you guys know what I grew up with. I hope you enjoyed. I'm so tired. After I'm done filming this, I'm probably going to edit it right away. If I upload this on the 16th, just know that I filmed this at 11 o'clock the night before. Go me, and I will see you next time. I'm gonna go do homework and make TikToks. Run again, run again, run again. Goodbye.